What's the process? Again, study, 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 and study the markets. Just look at charts. Lots of charts. Notice certain nuances that happen. Study the genuine article. Find some stocks that have done really well. Usually, I'll showcase what's really working in these weekend charts. Occasionally, I'll show a loser just to show that you can lose money trading and you have to honor your stop. But for the most part, you want to be focusing on the genuine article. And that line of reasoning comes from somebody emailed me years ago about counterfeit currency detectives. And as I've said quite often, they don't sit around and study a bunch of monopoly money. Yeah, this orange $500 bill is is bogus or this yellow you know, one, one third size $100 bill is bogus. They actually look at a real $100 bill and they look for the look, the feel, the threads, the little markers or whatever and whatever else they're looking for. And the thing about the, the currency detectives is that after studying and studying and studying the, the intricacies of the currency, a fake tends to stand out like a sore thumb. It looks, feels, it just immediately they, they know like that if it's fake or not. And, and your same sort of reasoning and logic works really, really well with stocks. Now, as I've said quite quite a bit, keep in mind that years of mechanical system programming has made me a discretionary trader. Now, as I'll say in a minute, and I'll just repeat right now, I will bits and pieces maybe follow something mechanical here and there. Like for instance, I went long queues just for S and G's, only 100 shares, and I'm going to hang on to that until I get stopped out vis-a-vis -vis this system. And then I'll say, hey, well, we had a losing trader. Hey. Look how easy it was. I just held on for five years and it went up 200 points. Who knows? We'll just see what happens. Also, like I said last week, Emilio Tomasini, who I'll mention here again in one minute, he thinks I'm more mechanical than I really am. And I think he's more discretionary than he really is. Emilio Tomasini is known for mechanical systems. What am I looking for? I'm looking for an edge, not a grail. Grail hunting is fun, but it does not exist. I'm fairly convinced I would have found it after spending thousands and thousands of hours working on this. And I forget how many charts I've looked at over my career, but it's probably about 20 million by now. I mean, you figure a couple thousand a day over a year's time. What's that? Let's say, let's say 2,000 round numbers. Not counting a lot of the analysis. That's just the end of day analysis, 252. Yeah, it's a half a million a year, so 20-something years. So it's over 10 million at least. Now, over time, through, again, a shit ton of empirical research, I have noticed some things like Landry Light and bow ties. And so I'm not, I'm not looking per se, okay? But sometimes it just finds me, like the real body stacking up watching the intraday data. That might be something there, for instance. I don't know, I haven't fleshed it out yet. And the percent ranges and stuff like that it just seems to make sense. It has to be something easy to recognize and again, follow it. Can you actually follow it? How do you discover, build, create rules for each trading setup? So again, look at a bunch of charts and see what's conceptually correct and plausible. And so the IPO example, again, makes a good a good example. We talked about it last week. It's like, okay, if an IPO, again, is going to go from 10 to 100, it's going to have to make a new closing high first. Let's say it's at, it's at 7, okay, and 10 would be a new closing high. And I noticed that a lot of times the first week, they just kind of die out and never come back. So that taught me to wait until at least Friday. If it comes public on Monday, wait till the fifth day. So that's one thing. And I also noticed that if it was very, very thin, it might make that new closing high, but then implode because there's not enough players and one big player comes in and unloads the shares and it can make the IPO crash. I noticed it worked a little bit better with $5 or higher IPOs. And I noticed that it worked better with $20 or less IPOs. So that's kind of like the sweet spot in there. And I'm not rigid in all this. And this is why if you're a pure mechanical trader, I, I think you can get into trouble because sometimes you have to be a little bit flexible. Now, if you're a mechanical trader and get flexible, before you know it, 
you got to be careful because your discipline can go out the window. So everything I do is kind of gradual and slow. For instance, and not and not going to make a huge change in the in the basis of what I'm doing. So for instance, with the with the buy at B, I had a twenty dollar rule, but it seems like in more recent years, between 20 and 30 is okay. So now it's kind of more of the $30 rule. But with something like the TFM 10% system, I'm not going to change that. I might noodle with a similar system, but I'm not going to change the TFM 10% system because once you get a mechanical system like that, you probably want to leave it in place. Now, am I talking out of both sides of my mouth? Maybe. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. <laughs> But as long as something, if you got it all ironed out and it's pretty simple, then just follow the simple system. That's my whole goal a lot of times when I do any mechanical testing and research. And that's how it all got started back in 90, I always forget, I think it was 96 it actually came out. But but again, in 94, 95, when I was working on it, the like the 220 EMA system was just as simple as can be. I wanted to show that a simple system could work when it comes to trend following. Now, as an example for like rules and such, it's like something like a textbook TKO. That's where you have a TKO at a big wide range bar down. Sometimes you can enter just above the high and put a stop in just below the low. And then if you take that measurement of entry minus a stop, that gives you the initial profit target, the IPT. And by the way, I do have a spreadsheet that if you go to members resources on my website, I have a spreadsheet where you can punch in, if you punch in the entry and the stop, it'll calculate the number of shares based on your account size, based on the risk you want to put up. And it'll also calculate that IPT for you. And that's the beauty of like a textbook TKO. Everything is kind of already laid out for you. Can you recommend any references on how to research and analyze your trading ideas? So again, not to beat the dead horse, but just look at a lot of charts and see what's conceptually correct and plausible. And do a lot of hand walkthroughs bar by bar is a great thing to do. If you're just looking at setups for stocks in general, then just look at a lot of stocks again and study the success as opposed to trying to design a method. Obviously, something like market timing, you want to have something that's a little bit more mechanical and a little less feel. But as far as stocks, I use a lot of discretion and, and I think it's a look in a feel for the market. And I think that's how you want to approach it. And also, for instance, and this is what being a discretionary trade, I guess, is all about too. We had a buy signal a while back in the S&P on the TFM 10% system, but it looked like the market had had completely reversed because it took off away from the moving average, came back in. And as I've said a thousand times, my moving average line was so wide that it actually touched the bar and I didn't see the daylight. It I didn't or landry light as I now call it. And I just didn't like the way it looked. And then I didn't realize it was the actual buy setup. But technically if I was following the system mechanically, that would have been a buy. Years ago I used to devour my stocks and commodity magazines, especially anything that related to system development. And as I've said quite a bit, years and years of programming have made me a discretionary trader. And very rarely do I go in and, and create something like TFM 10% system. But I do like to look at charts and then work on the art of reading the charts. But if you are really interested in system design, go back and get the back issues. I think you can probably get a CD or something and, and, and look at all those old stocks and commodities magazines. Emilio Tomasini, a friend of mine from Italy, he gave me a copy of his book in Italy when we were there in English, and it's called Trading Systems. I I haven't found it since the move. I'd be happy to loan it out, but I don't know where it is. So that's the that's the only book I can think of that gets into system design. So here's a slide from last week left over. So kind of everything I said tonight. Empirical research is the best thing. And one thing that I think is kind of important here, two things actually. One, don't reinvent the wheel. It's it's It seems like my educational business, I work myself out of a job. And that can be kind of frustrating, just kind of me venting a little bit. It's like I work with somebody and I'll help them out, I'll help them out, I'll help them out. And then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, I got it. I'm going to go off my own now. And it's like, well, hang on. 
keep me on staff. You know, it's like, I wish I had somebody on staff, so to speak, that I could talk to about all these things and stuff that I'm getting into and working on. So it's kind of just the opposite of what the institutions would do. If the institutions are happy with you, they keep you around. But it's like the the retail, nothing wrong with retail. We ought to stall somewhere. But the retail business, as soon as they begin to catch on a little bit, they quit. And, and a lot of these people, and I don't want to single anybody out, a lot of these people who think they got it, I, they're still making a lot of mistakes that I'm seeing. And so, you know, God bless them. But don't go out and reinvent the wheel is what I'm trying to say. It's like they, they get some ideas and then all of a sudden they – they try to do all these other crazy things and that just slowed down their learning. I know I'm talking about three different things at once, but that just slowed down their learning by possibly years or possibly forever. It's like, as I've said before, I spent 30 years working on the pullback. Take my stuff. Okay. If you want to tweak it up a little bit, knock yourself out, but take my stuff and maybe make it a little better and then make it your own, but don't start from scratch and reinvent the wheel and, I don't know why, but everyone seems to have to go through that process. Okay, John Ross has the book. <laughs> okay, you sent me that book a while ago, along with some others. Yeah, so uh, I cleaned out my books, and that that one was not supposed to go. Uh, but uh, hang on to it, John. So at least it's out there. No, 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 don't worry about that. Just hang on to it. <laughs> 